Well, a new report from the patient ombudsman highlights the strain patients, caregivers, and health care providers in Ontario have been under. The ombudsman received more than 3,300 complaints in the 2021-2022 fiscal year. There was a 43% increase in the number of patients and caregivers who said they were treated with a lack of sensitivity, caring, courtesy, or respect at hospitals, particularly in emergency departments. Well, with more on this report, we're joined live by the Ontario Patient Ombudsman, Craig Thompson. Craig, thank you so much for joining us this morning on CP24. I've been reading this report. There's some uh, very uh, concerning details. Uh, what were some of the most concerning details that you found uh, while investigating this? Well, one of the things that, that's come through clearly in our report is the, the strain that the system finds itself under. And so we're seeing complaints of the nature where patients and, and families or, and their caregivers are relaying to us that there, there's um, moments of not being treated with, with what they say is re respect or courtesy and compassion when they're working with um, health care providers. So that's a new... Um, a new element to the complaints that we're getting, but it, it does speak to the overall challenges that the system finds itself under. And this was, and this, yes, this was during the 2021-2022 fiscal year, uh, still very deep in the pandemic. Obviously, a lot of strain was put on the healthcare system, especially long-term care. Uh, I get, what was? The, can you highlight some of the specific stories and, and incidents that y you found uh, while doing this report? Because uh, I'm, I'm looking at reports of a sexual assault, which is obviously uh, deeply concerning uh, when we're talking about you know going to a healthcare provider. Yeah, no, that's, I mean, that's one of the, the um, purposes of this report, NRN reports, is to, is to draw and put a spotlight on some of these issues that people might not recognize actually are occurring within our healthcare system. And it's, again, not to name, blame, or shame, but it's really to, to highlight the challenges and to help health care providers do um, a better job at dealing with some of these, these situations like interactions with security um, in hospitals or the incidence of sexual assault in a hospital uh, or healthcare setting. Uh, some of the findings involve security, uh, hospital security interventions uh, throughout this time. Uh, obviously, you know, tensions were very high throughout the pandemic. I'm sure a lot of these healthcare providers were under a lot of stress, but a lot of those providers, and especially in the nurses, they, they had to deal with um, a lot of very uh, volatile individuals uh, throughout that time. Yeah, you know, people are presenting at emergency rooms um, in uh, in a state where not only they're unwell, but they're also um, everyone's sort of drawn down in their capacity to cope, and so that works. You know, that's that's for patients and families, but also for the healthcare providers. So we're seeing in those interactions um, through our complaints that there are times that there's negative in, in negative interventions um, with security personnel, and so we're we're asking the um, hospitals in particular. Um, to be very, um, you know, live to the, to the fact that these interactions are happening on hospital property. So it is the responsibility of those organizations, in particular patient relations, to uh, investigate those incidents and treat them um, very seriously because these interactions are increasing. There were 879 complaints that involved concerns about organizations outside of the patient uh, uh, ombudsman jurisdiction. Uh, how is that going to change forward, especially with some of this uh, talk about expanding uh, private health care? Well, the, the rise in, the, in what we call non-jurisdictional complaints uh, speaks to the challenges that people have navigating our health care system. It's not the easiest um, a system to be able to navigate, even to get care or to even to, to know how to complain. So we we're more than happy to take complaints um, when people don't know where to complain, because then we will do what we call a referral to the proper organization. But those the the increase in in um, non jurisdictional complaints does speak to the confusion that uh, that people find. In terms of uh, the expansion um, of our jurisdiction into oversight of those independent health facilities or, or what people refer to sometimes as private clinics. Uh, that's something that um, we're used to dealing with organizations of all shapes and sizes. So that, from that standpoint, um, it won't be new uh, work for us. What will be new is, is that is an addition of several hundred new organizations with um, their own complaints process that, that they'll have to develop and also have to learn about our process. Obviously, there's a, a lot of um, cracks in the healthcare system. A lot of things need to still be fine-tuned coming out of this 
pandemic, uh, are, are there going to be a list of recommendations that are going to be forwarded to the Ministry of Health uh, so that we can avoid a lot of these things that we're seeing in this report? Well, this report has been shared with the Ministries of Health, Ministry of Long-Term Care, and all the stakeholders within the sector. So this, this, um, that is the intent of, of us uh, issuing this annual report, is to, is to draw um, uh, you know, awareness to some of these more protracted issues and the ones that are, that are emerging. Uh, we see that as our role is to be able to, to, to uh, reflect back to the um, system. What we see is um, you know, some signals that there's some problems occurring and try to get ahead of it. So uh, we're hoping that that's the, the, um, the spirit in which this report is taken. Yeah, a lot of these problems need uh, urgent solving. Ontario patient ombudsman Craig Thompson, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you for the interest.